Hi everyone and thank you for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to answer the question if PepsiCo's stock is a buy. I'm going to use a simplified version of my six-step framework for analysis. So let's get right into it. The first step in my framework is customer value. And for PepsiCo, they offer great tasting beverages and snacks at affordable prices in plentiful locations. So you can find their stuff at a lot of places. So it's really close to the purchase point in a lot of areas, making it convenient to buy. Revenue has grown from 65 billion to 79 billion in the last decade, which is pretty good growth for a snack and beverage company. The next step in my framework is unit economics and PepsiCo has proven decades of earning excellent profit margins in the core business of selling beverages and snacks. Its gross profit margin averaged 54% in the last decade, operating profit margin 15%. The next step I like to consider is the total addressable market. And to just, you know, PepsiCo has a robust snack segment also, but just the non alcoholic beverage market is estimated to reach 1.25 trillion globally in 2022. And that's forecast to grow at a compound annual rate of 7.2% through 2026 so a massive market one of the largest in the world competition is another step in my framework and in all of the industries that I look at um, the competition in the beverage market is one of my favorites from an investors perspective there is it's rare to see price cuts and promotions between its biggest rival coca-cola you will see discounts but these are primarily for purchasing bigger quantities for instance if you buy three two liter bottles you get each one you know three for five dollars or four for ten dollars you might see deals like that to try and get people to buy more each visit in the in, to the grocery store but there coca-cola and pepsi-cola are not trying to undercut each other on pricing They've been competing for decades and it's it's a stable industry now because of the history of competition. They've kind of found the balance of where they want to be and they're just kind of keeping it level. They're not trying to battle each other, lowering prices, making it worse for each other and better for customers. They're just kind of keeping prices high, maintaining high profit margins, and they're just going to keep it that way because they know that if... If one of them lowers prices, the other one can lower prices and they can just keep going lower and lower and lower and lower all the way until all the profits are depleted and they're both left worse off. Contrastly, they can just choose to keep prices high and continue generating excellent profits. So that's what they're choosing and that's really good for investors. Valuation is the next step in my framework and arguably the most important. I looked at PepsiCo using the price to earnings and price to free cash flow and I looked at their value dating all the way back before 2014 and according to the price to free cash flow at 37 that's just nearly as expensive as it's been in the entire decade it, going all the way back to 2013 and the price to earnings is not as expensive, but still on the higher end of its average going all the way back to 2013. So the stock is expensive. It's just about as, as more expensive than it's been going back to 2013. The final step in my framework considers risks and the primary risk for PepsiCo is the global fight against sugary beverages and salty snacks right we've seen this around the world governments are you've seen different kinds of sugar taxes um 
programs to try and shift that demand curve to the left for sugary beverages and salty snacks. And then you've seen consumers respond by demanding uh, drinks with less calories, healthier snacks. And so this is a risk for PepsiCo going forward, even though they've they've begun shifting their their portfolio of, of beverages and snacks to include more healthier versions still a big portion of their sales comes from salty snacks and sugary beverages so that's the primary risk the second risk i i note here is the rising costs of materials labor and transportation could pressure profit margins in the near term we're seeing the the coronavirus pandemic boost inflation worldwide and this can be a risk for pepsi cola Now that I've looked at each step in my framework, let's look at the grades I assigned each one of these. Now, I've been a professor for several years now. I teach finance and economics at a university. And so I've grown accustomed to assigning grades. And so I brought that into my framework where I, I look at each step in my framework and I give a company a grade in each step. So for Pepsi, the customer value, I gave them an A minus here. They do an excellent job delivering tasty beverages and snacks that consumers love, right? They've, I showed earlier that revenue was $80 billion in its most recent year. So clearly they're delivering something that customers love. Otherwise, they wouldn't generate $80 billion in revenue selling snacks and beverages, right? So A- minus in that regard. Unit economics, I gave them an A+. Plus. They're generating excellent profit margins both on the gross profit margin all the way down to operating profit and even net profit margin I gave them an A plus not only because of excellent margins but a long history of delivering these excellent margins so they get a bonus points for a long history of delivering excellent profit margins total addressable market again I gave them an A plus here uh, uh, a total addressable market north of 1 trillion gets an automatic A plus from me and you know for them the beverage market alone is worth 1.2 trillion i didn't even consider the snack market how large that is excellent they already get an a plus just from one side of the business next i looked at competition and again i gave them an a plus here the beverage the competition in the beverage market is one of my favorites in all of the industries i follow i love that pepsi and coca-cola are not battling each other trying to decrease price prices to gain market share i love that it's stable i love that there's a long history of competition so they know how the other company will respond and so they don't get into these price wars i love this the stability of that so i gave them a plus here risks i gave them a b minus here because of that movement globally the health shift and then also the impacts of inflation and how that could impact profit margins and then valuation, I gave them a C, C plus here. Their uh, their stock is just expensive, um, and it's recently it's made it even worse because investors have shunned unprofitable growth stocks and moved more towards defensive investments like Pepsi Cola, and that's boosted its valuation even further. And so it's it's expensive right now. C plus it gets from me in that regard. So now that we've looked at all of the grades, let's answer the question if PepsiCo stock is a buy. PepsiCo stock is not a buy. The expensive valuation combined with the elevated near-term risks from inflation and then the long-term risk from the shift to healthier snacks swayed me in recommending investors to wait before buying the stock if the price pulls back i want to say 15 10 to 15 percent it would make it a more compelling case to purchase for now i would recommend just waiting and not buying this stock just yet so let me know what you think in the comments down below i'd be interesting i'll be interested in hearing your thoughts and so i'll see you next time in the next segment of is this stock a buy thank you for watching i want to thank the motley fool for sponsoring this video 
The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for all investors of all skill sets and risk levels. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by more than three times. Go to fool.com slash parkev to get your 10 stock picks now.